Welcome back to RetroCAD. Today's topic, AutoCAD version 1. Not version 2001, but version 1 from October of 1983. Specifically, we're going to be working with AutoCAD 1.4, which was an incremental release over its predecessors. With it, it brought several new features. For example, the line command now had a close feature. There were zoom enhancements, such as zoom previous and zoom extents. There were more text features, such as an aligned text, which could fit text between two points, and also vertical text, useful for dimensioning. There were now control keys for handling ortho, snap, and grid settings, and the spacebar acted as a return key. There's a files command within the editor, and there's several new commands, such as array, personal favorite, hatch, W block, sketch, break, and fillet. But there are still a few things missing from this version of AutoCAD. Specifically, commands like extend, trim, offset, rotate, mirror, and explode. There were also no O snaps of any kind, so you couldn't snap to an endpoint, midpoint, intersection, center, none of that which really makes you have to plan what you're gonna draw. The other thing missing here is any sort of undo command. So if you draw something, you draw that thing. Speaking to our hardware we're going to use, this is a custom built XT equivalent based off the NUXT motherboard, which is a new release from Monotech in New Zealand. Uh, YouTuber LGR did a really nice breakdown on this machine. So I'll link his video here in the description. This version of it has a math coprocessor chip, and I've also got an authentic IBM CGA card, which this version of AutoCAD would not run without. So with all that said, let's get into AutoCAD 1.4. While modern versions of AutoCAD go directly into the drawing editor, early versions like this one opened into a main menu. This menu gave you several options for beginning a new drawing or working with an existing one. Plotting also happened from this menu, as well as the configuration of AutoCAD itself. DXF files were saved and loaded from this menu, and there were also some file utilities. Let's look quickly at what these file utilities were. This menu existed for users who weren't familiar with DOS or lacked tools like Xtree for managing files. We'll just list the drawing files that we have on hand here to show you how that feature worked. You could also delete and rename files from here. Pretty handy, really. Going back to the main menu, we're just going to jump into the configuration for a moment. Here it would display to you the current configuration of hardware that you have. And then we'd be presented with options for modifying them. One that always kind of intrigued me was the allowing IO port configuration. This was sort of an advanced feature, and if you chose it, you would be asked extra questions during the configuration. Usually these were specifics about your COM port addresses and so on. One thing that we're going to change here is the video display. I want to set it for color so that you can see why I might choose to draw in monochrome mode. So here, am I going to select a different one? Yes. I have to specify my diskette drive. And you can hear it whirring away in the background, perhaps. We're going to choose the CGA card and we're going to say, yes, I do want color. We're asked a few specific questions about the colors. Do we want a status line, coordinates, axis? And then upon returning to the main menu, we are sent out to DOS and we must restart AutoCAD. So now we're going to enter a drawing in the color mode. In fact, we'll use the colors drawing so you can see them. C 
CGA mode only supported four colors. There were a number of palettes available, and it looks like we've got the one with blue, green, pale red, and yellow. We're in a 40 column CGA mode, which is about one half of the resolution of monochrome mode. So you can really see why someone might want to draw in monochrome specifically. That's enough color mode for me, so I'm going to head back to high resolution monochrome mode. Before we get into the editor, I just want to take a quick look at the Operating Parameters option. This menu is where you would set four different options within AutoCAD. The first one being Alarm on Error. This would allow AutoCAD to beep loudly whenever you made an error. That would be fun for the people who work around you. The Initial Drawing Setup is where you would establish some default settings for things like units, and snap. Personally, I'm setting my snap to 1 since there are no O snaps or offset commands within AutoCAD 1.4. Here you would also set the drawing area, essentially your limits. AutoCAD didn't have a lot of memory to work with, so you couldn't really have the infinite drawing space that we're all accustomed to in modern AutoCAD. The Drawing Editor is where you would set your default menu file that would load. And then lastly, the Dimensioning Text Orientation. So whereas modern AutoCAD has perhaps hundreds of dimensioning variables, here there are two, and they are set within this menu. With that behind us, let's move on to the Drawing Editor. We'll begin a new drawing that we'll call RetroCAD. The drawing editor starts up, and the first thing we notice is in the upper left-hand corner, the FOST display. F stands for Fill, which can be toggled on and off. O stands for Ortho. S for Snap. And T for Tablet, when you have a digitizer installed. Next to that, we see the layer display. There are 124 layers in AutoCAD 1, and they are numbered and can't be renamed. So this shows you which layer that you're on. Over here we have the coordinates display, the screen menu, and at the bottom the command menu. So let's do a little light drafting here and see where it takes us. Let's begin with the line command. It's very simple to go around and draw some lines and we can use the new close command. I was a bit surprised to be able to type C because that's one of the very few shortcut keys I've found in this program. I really expected to have to type the word close fully. Next, let's do an arc. And here we'll pick three points and an arc appears. So nice. Circle, which has its new functions, three point and two point, Let's draw a three-point circle. I've always found that to be kind of fun for some reason. Pick our three points, and there's our circle. By now you've probably noticed that the blips are occurring everywhere that I do a command pick. There was no blip mode variable at this time. The blips were permanently on and part of the program. The only way to get rid of the blips that were drawn are to issue the redraw or regen command. Next, let's do some text. I've noticed the text command takes an extra moment to start. I'm guessing that's because it has to go out and reference the font file. We're going to go with regular left justified here. We'll make our text this tall and go in this direction. RetroCAD. Nice. Next, let's insert a block. I've got a block defined as an external file. So let's insert it here. Very cool. Before we go any further, let's talk for a moment about the hatch command. The hatch command was new to this program, and it's a simple matter to use it. 
we specify the pattern that we're going to use. We'll use Escher because it's one of my favorites. We'll give it a scale at, oh, I don't know, four. And then we're going to select our objects. Here I'm going to use a window and you have to fully type the word window in order to get that to happen. You can't type W. And now the hatch fills in. So cool. Next we will erase that hatch with the erase command. And one thing that you'll notice is there's no pick box. I've still got my crosshairs. What you do is you just pick close to the thing or right on the thing that you want to erase. It doesn't give you any feedback about whether or not you've picked something. And then you hit enter and it says it's selected, found and erased that object. As you can see, some of the objects that the hatch was touching get kind of affected by the erase. And our blips are left here all over the screen. Getting rid of those is a matter of using the redraw command. So one of the most interesting things to me is how move and copy behave in AutoCAD 1. I'm going to choose move. And the first thing I have to choose is a displacement. So I'm going to try to move this piece of text. So I'm going to pick here as the first point. And for our displacement, this will be our second point. Then you choose the objects to move and I'll pick our text. Hit enter and the text moves. Now, one interesting thing I found in doing some drafting with AutoCAD 1 is that you can use the copy command as a sort of offset command. So I can say, I want my displacement to be this far. And then my object to be this object. Hit enter. And I have offset the line that far. So used in conjunction with snap, you can create a series of accurately spaced objects fairly easily. It's a bit convoluted to do it this way, but it's the way that exists. One of our uh, long-standing commands that is, I think, might have made its debut here, I guess it would have since it's version one, is oops. Oops brings back the last erased entity, which in this case is our hatch fill. Up next, we'll use the change command. To change something, you would pick that object, hit enter, and then you can either specify a new insertion point, which strangely it calls intersection point, or L for layer. And I'll just pick a new insertion point. We can also pick a new height since it's text. We'll make it this tall. And a new angle, we'll make it this way. We can also specify new text, but it's not necessary. So we've done a few things to transform this text with one command. We've moved it to a new insertion point, we've changed its height, and we could have also changed what text or angle it was. Really interesting. I'm going to create a new line here. Can't, can't shortcut it. Got to type line. Just keeping it real. And now we're going to use the fillet command. And we're going to use R for radius. Make sure it's set to zero. And then fill it two lines together. Now, if I recall correctly, at this time, the fill it command would fill it the two longest points of the line together, which is what we're seeing here. It really didn't matter which line segment you picked, and I'll show you why that is. Can't shortcut it. We'll draw a new line. And we'll choose fill it again. And we're going to pick, in kind of a modern methodology, the two lines that we'd want to keep. Instead, we get the two longest line segments. A real difference from how it works now. We also have the break command, which allows you to pick a line and then break it. And this command also works with arcs. Hit 
and also with circles. Since there's no undo, you've got to be pretty specific about what you're doing with the break command. Down here we'll pick the redraw command, and then we'll move on to the next menu. Alright, let's get into our second page of editing commands. Our first command is the point command, which creates a point entity. And of course, with the blip mode being on, we have to do a redraw in order to see where those points ended up. Next we have the trace command, which has sort of a, a filled polyline sort of situation, but without being an actual polyline. The trace command, uh, it's nice for graphical things, you know, like borders and stuff, but ultimately I think it was superseded by the polyline in pretty much every way. Then we have the solid command, which you can pick three points, hit enter, and it creates a filled solid. Or if you pick four points, like here in clockwise order, it will create a bow tie shape which was always kind of interesting as an HVAC drafter, because this was a supply duct symbol. So really, to get a, a filled rectangle, you have to actually choose your points in a bow tie shape to get a rectangle. Our next command is Array, and I'm just going to draw a few lines that we can do an array with. I'm going to choose my three objects. And I've noticed in the uh, circular arrays here, in AutoCAD 1, you can specify the angle, you can specify the number of items, but rotating them is not a thing yet. So it's not quite that spirograph effect that a lot of people like to see from their arrays. But it is interesting nonetheless, and makes some uh, pretty far out patterns. Going into the hatch command next, I'm just going to create an object to hatch. And now we will go in. Say so hatch, we'll choose our pattern. There's a variety of patterns. We'll choose the Escher pattern. The scale will be three. And we'll window our objects. And it does that hatch pattern that we all know and love. Up next we have the sketch command, which allows you to basically freehand draw in AutoCAD. Personally, I haven't found this to be super useful. I've maybe used it once or twice for, you know, early attempts at like tracing a signature or topographic map or something, but really there's, there's really better ways to solve each of those things. For our record increment, we're going to put 0.5. So every 0.5, it's going to create a new line segment. Our ortho is on, so it's stepped, but if we turn that off, we'll see we get a relatively smooth, for this resolution anyway, line. And there's our sketch. Up next is the dimensioning, and from my own experience here in testing this out, it's been a little hit and mess um, on how it works, but I'm just going to try to pick my first extension origin, my dimension line intersection, and my second extension line. Hey, look at that, four inches, and we'll do a redraw to clean it up a bit. Nice. The zoom commands are right here, all, window, and previous. Then we have list and distance, and I'm just going to talk about list distance and status kind of together. Now, we can do the distance command. You know, you basically pick two points and it tells you how far apart they are. But with the list command, it gives you more information and it flips over to a text screen that in the setup I have right here with the video capture and stuff, comes up as a black screen. So you're just gonna have to take my word for it. It, it shows you what the name of the entity is. You know, it's a line, start point, end point, what layer it's on, what color it is, and so on. The area command works just fine here. We just choose some 
points and looks like we've drawn this with the snap off so it's almost impossible to pick right on those things but we'll just do an approximation here for our purposes and it tells you the area being 60. Next we have the tablet mode, the files command that pretty much mirrors what we saw in the main menu, and the plot command. Alright, moving on, we've got our last page of commands here. Limits we've spoken about that sets the the space that you're going to draw within. And if you do commands that are outside of it, it will actually warn you and say, warning, you're outside of the limits. There's grid where you can turn on a visual grid that can be a mirror of your snap or it can be set at a different scale, depending on how you want to work. Then of course we have the snap mode, fill, some on-off menu items, the units command where you would set up decimal or architectural, axis, base, the block commands for creating blocks of things, and same with W block, which was new to 1.4. You could create a block and then write it out to disk. So for example, if we were going to create a block, and we'll just call it like uh, L shape, and our insertion base point, I'll turn the snap off, will be right here. And a window. Now we're writing a block of all of those objects. So whenever we want to use them, we can just refer to L shape, insert it, change the scale, and the rotation. Which, interestingly, this is one of the only ways to get entities to rotate, because there's no rotate command. The problem is, is once you've blocked an object, you can't explode it back into its sub-entities. So you're, you're kind of locked into the specifics of that shape. You can definitely re-edit and redefine that block to have different entities within it. But ultimately, it's going to be in whatever scale and rotation that it's inserted at. The load command is used to load font files. The layer command is very simple. Uh, basically you can hit question mark to see a list of the layers which are numbered 1 through 124. Turn them on, turn them off, type the number of one, and here we'll type like number 3. And now we can see that in the upper left hand corner our L will change to L3. Setting colors doesn't do much for us here in monochrome, but you can definitely set them in different colors. There's a menu for loading menus. Help. End save. Interesting note, there's no save in this version. There's only end save. So when you save, it also ends the session and goes back out to the main menu. And then quit. So, what we're going to do next is let's just load up an existing drawing that I drew the other night, and we'll take a little tour around it. Alright, let's edit an existing drawing, and this one is Vert Fire. Uh, this is a vertical fire damper, the kind of detail that gets included in an HVAC drawing. Shows where a fire damper goes into a duct that passes through a fire-aided wall. We used to have huge libraries of these and kind of one of the first things I ever did as a drafter was redraw the entire library that we had in CAD for everyone to use and insert on their own drawings. This was interesting to draw because of course it's not to scale but there's definitely uh, some proportions that are important to keep together. I'm just going to kind of zoom around this and uh, we can talk about different things that come to mind while I'm in here. Uh, one really interesting one that I'm not sure I mentioned yet is how panning works. And we've all used the pan command in AutoCAD. And basically you choose a point and then you pick somewhere else and your drawing shifts along the points that you picked. But here in AutoCAD version 1, it's reversed. You're picking a point where the screen is. 
So we're, we're moving the screen rather than the objects. So if we want to pan to the right, we're going to say we want to pan from here to here. And then our whole view is going to shift over to the right like that. Really interesting difference. So now we will zoom previous. Um, when we drew this detail, this object was going to be copied and rotated up to the top. So I turned it into a block. And if I do a move on it, you'll see that it's, it's all one entity. And since there's no undo, I have to move it back. <laughs> nice. Thank you, Snap Mode. This hatch pattern is kind of a visual copy of one of the more modern concrete hatch patterns. And I had to draw it myself just by hand because the concrete hatch pattern in AutoCAD 1 is pretty pretty simplistic and doesn't really visually come off the same way. Now it looks like my hatch pattern up here might have leaked out. I'm not sure if I noticed that the other night when I drew it. Sure enough. So the challenge is when you're drawing these kind of things is in this space, the hatch pattern in, in all versions of AutoCAD would see the open space that's in this part right here, and the hatch pattern would escape out and, you know, would say that it was invalid. So basically I had to drag, copy and drag all of these entities off to the edge of the screen, clean up the boundary, hatch that in, and then move the hatch pattern back into these objects. So kind of convoluted, but it's, you know, working with the tools the way that you have to at the time. Another interesting part of this drawing was drawing this spring section in the middle of the fire damper. Normally this would be really easy to draw, you know, using offset, trim, and extend, but instead I had to use circle and break and copy with a displacement. Uh, it took a lot longer than I expected, but it was, uh, it was kind of interesting and it came out pretty acceptably, you know, for, for what we're working with here. Uh, the zoom previous command, oh, got to type good. All the zoom commands pretty much work at the same speed here, and there's, they're sort of on a par with a regen. So it can, it can take a while, as you see, to draw entities to the screen the more things that you draw. After I drew all the dimension leader lines on this drawing, I went in to draw some uh, leader line arrowheads, and I found that using filled arrowheads slowed this drawing down even further. You know, it's kind of it's kind of like a super dense hatch at this point in AutoCAD's development, and it just was pretty brutal for the speed. So I think that's pretty much what we're gonna look at here in AutoCAD 1. So let's jump back out to my desk level. So that is AutoCAD version one. Kind of a nice tour. It's really interesting to have had the experience of seeing it grow incrementally over the years and then to just dive back and see like what its origin point looked like. In the future, I hope to set up a dual monitor situation so I can better work with the text screen versus the graphics screen. I'd also like to set up a digitizer with AutoCAD 1. If you have anything that you'd like to see happen with this, please go ahead and put it down in the comments. Uh, let me know what you think. If you thought this was amazing, say so. If you thought it was terrible, I'll, I'll take that. Uh, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Like this video if you liked it. Uh, there's an alarm bell somewhere that you can press to get notified of when more RetroCAD videos are posted. So with that, I say thank you for viewing and thank you for being part of RetroCAD. See ya.